it's like quite the job. Hello. So welcome to week two. And we're going to be talking about lipids, uh, which is a wonderful topic. And it takes a good two weeks. I could do a whole term just on lipids because uh, it is probably the most misunderstood topic that there is. So what are lipids? And every time when I ask that, I get this answer. Let's see, there we go. Uh, fat. Fats are lipids. And I kind of set you up with the picture from the screen that you are correct partially. Fats are just one type of lipids. Lipids are a huge category, and that's why we're spending two weeks of our 10 weeks on them. Uh, and so fats are one type. Uh, and what a lipid is, and this is the definition you need to know, is all things that are biological substances, everything in your body that is water insoluble, that doesn't mix with water. So that would include fats and oils because that simple experiment, if you have ever made a uh, salad dressing, vinegar and oil, they don't mix, they separate. Um, so it is this wonderful little cartoon I found about the little poor little oil droplet who's being called a hydrophobe. So another way of saying it is anything that is hydrophobic in your body, in nature, is considered a lipid. Uh, and hydrophobic means nonpolar. It means it doesn't mix with water. And it would be looking at a chemical structure, molecules, because this is chemistry, it would be made up of mostly carbons and hydrogens. Uh, and so we're gonna walk through that. And that's why this is a huge, huge grouping. Um, and so that is the piece that they have in common is they're gonna be made up of mostly carbons and hydrogens. All right, there are many types. And they each have their own distinct purpose, but they're extremely important. And so they have been um, misunderstood. They're very misunderstood uh, because there is so much misinformation in the media about them. There has been and there continue to be. And as you all know, there is a lot of misinformation out there in the media these days about many things. Uh, and they will tell you you've had too much fats and then, oh no, you haven't had enough fats. That's the trend right now is you need to eat more fats. Um, and then they'll say, oh no, 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 the ratio is wrong. Oh, the wrong type. Oh, you're preparing things wrong. Oh, and it just gets to be, oh, we all look like that monkey and we're scratching our head. Even me, I have an education in this. Uh, what are they talking about? Until you turn off the news and start reading and thinking for yourself instead of letting other people tell you. Um, and what it has led to is that we in the United States are the most malnourished country now. So we get our macronutrients. We're also the fattest country, actually not the fattest. There are 16 that are fatter now, but we are the most malnourished. So even though we get the nutritional calories, if you believe in calories, which I don't, we don't get all the micronutrients. We're eating the wrong food. And it's so simple. All you need to get from anything this term is you got to eat real. You got to eat real food. All right. Uh, but what it's led to is all this misinformation is dis-ease. So if you've never seen the correct way the word is said, it is the lack of ease. That is what disease means, is you're missing the ease. Uh, and this is actually really simple and we get a lot of confusion and we then go step on the scale and go, oh, help, help. All right, so let's jump into it. Oh, and there we go. So this picture, when I get to see you all live, everybody goes, oh my gosh, holy moly, can I still drop the class? And I have no idea to tell you the truth anymore because I have no idea what the schedule is, but um, don't drop. That's what I will tell you. I want over the next two weeks that you look at this slide and you go, oh, that's a sphingophospholipid, not a big deal. Um, the thing right now to realize, why are these all in the same category? They're all mostly carbon hydrogen. We do occasionally see one of those hoarders, oxygen, but the number of carbons, like here, there's 29, 30 carbons on this side and 15, 16 on this side. So 
46 carbons and only two oxygens? Oh, that is most definitely. Oh, and look, we're gonna get to do a whole week on steroids, not a whole week, and not taking steroids. That's not, that's not part of the lab. Let's just move on before I say something else. And I'm gonna teach you here. So this is where if you don't have your notebook, uh, you wanna go get it. And what you needed to know from what I said so far is lipids are hydrophobic. Anything that's hydrophobic is a lipid. And now we're gonna draw fatty acids because the first half of any thing is drawing the pictures. So let's get started. Hello, I'm back. And it's April Fool's Day and I'm filming this. So I'm wearing my rainbow squid hat for my April Fool's and we're gonna talk about fatty acids. Um, so we're, let's just get started. FFA. Uh, FA always stands for fatty acids. F is saturated. All carbon, carbon single bond. So the way we're going to draw this, we start with carboxylic acid. Now remember, just like when we drew, you can put your little bond here. That can help. You don't have to. When we drew our carbohydrates, oxygens always have to be shown attached to the carbon, uh, and we show the H on the other side of the oxygen when it is attached to that. And then we're going to do zigzags. This represents our carbon. So this is carbon one, this is carbon two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh, let's go for twelve. So the way we would designate this is we would say twelve zero. The twelve stands for the number of carbons, and the zero stands for the number of double bonds. So if it's zero, you know you have saturated. And you've heard about saturated fats. And you're told they're evil. Um, they do have an issue. And we can see it in this picture. And that's why I'm going to have you draw the zigzags. Something the zigzags do is these are stackable. I think there's a highly processed kid's food that is called the stackables. Uh, and these are stackable. So because of the zigzag, they stack up. And that means that they're going to tend to be in solid because they're stackable and they keep stacking. And what that means they do is inside of us, they're going to stick together. They're stackable, they're sticky, they're fast. Uh, and they're going to make a clot, meaning a blood clot. So if you have a lot of these, in your bloodstream, they're going to stack up and they're going to clot and you could have a heart attack or a stroke. Now, there is a but because a lot of you are going, no, 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 I watched that video of Dr. Sherpa and the big culprit is sugar and you are correct. Uh, saturated fats are natural to our body. Our body makes saturated fats. Uh, the big problem is if there's a scar that has happened because of the sugar or because of the trans fats, which we're going to get to. Uh, the scarring of artery allows the clot to start forming. The clot is going to be what ends up closing the artery off. And so if you have damage from eating a lot of processed food, then eating a lot of fat. Um, and American diet has too much fat. Over 50% fat, that's way too much. Uh, and then what happens on low fats, they bring it down to only 30%. So you've already heard me talk about this. All right, so stackable means you're going to get a clot. So let's do a, a MUFA. Let's see what's so special about them. So a MUFA, the MU stands for monounsaturated. This unsaturated means a double bond. Mono means one. So we're going to have one double bond. Uh, and there is a trick to doing this. So whenever you have a double bond, uh, those of you who took Chem 105, you learned about cis and trans. There are two possibilities that can happen. And so let's do this. Let's do a 12-1. And there's going to be more to it. So let's go ahead and draw it. And you go, okay, I got this. I just do my zigzags and I get to 12. Oh, I zigzag the opposite way. So two, four, six, 
It doesn't matter if you go down or up first, um, and you'll probably have the same as me as you recognize. I am a very humble human, so I'm wearing my squids hat today, um, and I realized watching my videos, I don't have you guys to catch my mistakes and tell me, so my videos are not going to be perfect, um, and so please show me grace. You can send me an email, or you're going to come to my office hours, because you've already done that. You have to check in at least once a week with me in office hours. And some of you will come multiple times. All right, let's put a double bond. Let's put it between six and seven. There's a reason I'm doing that. But so you put another line there. This turns out this is trans. So we're going to do a quick cis and trans lesson. Trans means the piece coming in and the piece going out are opposite. It means you get a zigzag. So with trans, you get a zigzag, but you have a double bond. So trans ends up having a lot of issues. Uh, trans, you've all known, trans are so evil, and we've pulled them out of food, but we've just added more sugar uh, and other things. And so if you, again, watch the videos, they talk about the whole low-fat phase, fad, created more problems uh, because all they did is replace it with sugar uh, and process trans. Um, and so we've pulled the trans out and we've added new things which are actually going to cause the same issue and eat real food. Mother Nature made everything perfect, beautiful for you. All right, so these guys can stack because they zigzag if it's trans. Mother Nature did not make trans. Trans is a man-made thing. Uh, it was something during World War II, and there was a butter shortage because uh, there was cows were eating human food, uh, and they needed. There was a contest or something. I don't know. Remember the whole story, uh, but they developed margarine, which was our first trans fat, uh, and we'll look at that actually in a moment. So they stack and they have a double bond, and when you have a double bond, that means you can do something which is called oxidation. And I don't, I get to it in our slideshow. Uh, just remember, double bonds oxidize. It has to do with that extra bond. The electrons are, there's four electrons in that space between there, and that makes them more susceptible to damage. Uh, in the single bonds, there's always only two electrons, and so they're safe and secure. So double bonds, can cause oxidation. So this is a double whammy. Oxidation is what scars your arteries, and then it stacks there. Um, so trans are purely evil. Uh, you would not do this unless I said trans after it. So we're going to do it again. So you can draw the same molecule, but we're going to do it cis. And I'm not going to actually write the word cis in the question when I ask you to draw it. It is cis unless I tell you it's trans. Now, the thing that happens with cis is you're going to get a kink. Um, so we're going to draw cis. Let me go over here. This is natural. Keep it real. That's our motto for the term. It keeps your immune system healthy. Smiling. Generosity also. Um, and that is some of the beauty that is happening now. Uh, so in cis, it creates a kink. These guys are kinky. And because of that kink, they don't stack. So there's going to be a couple tricks here. With the MUFAs, what you're going to get is a kink. The kinks make about a 45 degree angle-ish. So we're going to get a look like that. It's going to end up with a slope down. All right, so we go to, I, we're going to have to go up first, sorry. Two, four, six. If we'd gone down, my kink would have gone up, and I didn't want to run into that. All right, so there's six. And then the kink comes out in the same direction it went in. So from five to six, it went in, and then we double bond, and then we go out. Whereas up here, it keeps going. And then you're going to now be at an angle. So this is six to seven. Now this is eight, ten, and that's my twelve. And so that's what happens is when you get to the double bond, you're going to kink. This is usually something that helps students. 
so they will often draw a very light line in, so they have the idea. Now, we're going to do more of these. I didn't fully name this one. This is my trans up here. This one would be called 12-1. There would be one more piece with it, and this symbol you'll see in the slideshow much nicer. This is an omega. We drew an omega-6. And I will always tell you what omega I want. And so let's explore what omega means. Omega, the alphabet, the Greek alphabet, first letter is alpha, and the last letter is omega. And so um, I believe there's a quote from the Bible that says, I am your alpha and your omega. This is called the alpha end. The far end, number 12, we're calling number 12, we're going to change that. Uh, is the omega end. And so, when you start counting with fatty acids, we're actually now going to start counting backwards. So, I'm going to erase my numbers. This is actually carbon 1 for the omega end. The end opposite the acid. So, that's 1. Here's 2. Here's 4. Here's 6. Omega-6 means the double bond is six carbons from the far end, from the tail, from the omega end. Uh, for this trans one, I should have actually said that. Also, it would have said omega-6 trans. So you would have known in a trans, it doesn't matter uh, that you get your kink in the right place because you're going to have the zigzags, and then you could just go back. So this would be one, two, four, six. So really... Our numbering should have been this way. This is one, two, four, so six, seven. Um, so they're both a 12, one, omega six, but trans stacks, cis kinks. The more double bonds you have, the kinkier it gets. So the more kinks. So let's actually try that. And I'm going to move you guys over here. So we have this board look at and I can try and line that up so we don't get the weird tilt. All right, we have the polar bear here. That was the other thing to remind me. These we're studying because we're in two weeks of lipids. Lipids get two weeks because they're so cool and there's so many of them because lipids are anything and everything in your body, in biology, that is not water soluble. Um, and so they're not a polar bear. So here, I have an elephant. So these are all elephants. All right. And actually, if you want, I can do the full thing. And I can be the elephant. That was the sugar, the elephant in the kitchen. There's lots of elephants in our kitchen. All right. There we go. My full April Fool's elephant in the kitchen. I am not polar. I'm an elephant with a squid tap. And I'm sure I've sanitized this and I echo. All right. So let's draw some PUFAs. P stands for poly. UFA is unsaturated, so polyunsaturated. And so we're going to have two or more double bonds. I will tell you how many you're going to have, so we're going to do these. I will also tell you where the first double bond appears, and when you have multiple double bonds, double bonds are always three carbons apart. That is the enzyme that is in our body, in Mother Nature, in everything. The double bond is always put three apart. So let's do... Let's just do one, and then we'll do a couple of examples. So, um, we'll stick with 12. So 12, and we'll say 2, and we'll say omega-3. So, it is not trans. If it was trans, I would tell you. And then you're just back to zigzags. It would stack, and now it has lots of double bonds, lots of oxidation, lots of trouble. So, poofers are wonderful because they have lots of kinks. Uh, but cooking with them, you're going to have lots of oxidation, lots of free radical damage, and we get to that in the slideshow. 
Let's just do one of these and we'll do another video and do more practice. So PUFAs are going to make uh, a double kink. So if you have two double bonds, the shape you're going to get is going to, because the first one is going to give you a kink here and then the second one. So it ends up being pretty much like an L. If you have three double bonds, you're going to get a kink, a kink, a kink, and another kink. And so they tend to start going around before they end up making like a full uh, looking like a C. Maybe we'll do one of those. All right. So with one, we had the slanting. If we had one double bond. And that actually, I started teaching it this way last term, and everybody could draw leaf beautifully. This is one of the hardest things we, we do for students. But you all end up doing it much more beautiful than you believe you can. All right, make my eraser. Let's do this example. And then we'll go back to the slides, and then we'll do some more examples. And then we'll get to apple. So, we're going to actually start at the far end. And this is where realizing we're going to have kind of this shape will help. So, this is going to be my carbon. And you may have to do this. All right. Um, there's my double bond, three to four. The kinking has to go that way. So this is three, four, and five. My next kink happens at six. So seven. There's nine, ten, eleven, and here's twelve. Um, and so something I did not show you, but if you want, you can always draw that last carbon in, or you can just show it as a zigzag. Uh, and so the OH would be the last one. This is a carbon. That's my number twelve carbon. And so this is how it would look. It gets pretty kinky. Um, great. Thank you. I'll see you in a bit. All right. So uh, let's talk about fatty acids. That was a quick introduction of drawing them. And you are going to be drawing them. Uh, at the end of the slideshow, we'll do some more practice. And in the next slideshow, we do more practice. So this is another way of looking at these. These, this is saturated. So the black is carbons and it's just zigzagging. Uh, the zigzags are the 109 degree angles. The white balls are just the hydrogens. This is our double bonded O and then our OH. So all of these are carboxylic acids, so they're fatty acids. This has one kink, so that's what I was trying to show you. It makes this L. This one has a double kink. These uh, oleic acid, it doesn't show it on here, is an omega-6. So we're six in, so one, two, three, four, five, six, and that's where our kinks start. Um, I'm sorry, it's an omega-9. Uh, so two, four, six, eight. So there's our double bond at nine. Linoleic is an omega six. And it would have told you that when you're asked to draw it. So we see two kinks. So here you can see it had that 45 degree slope that I talked about. And here it's making an L. And then this one is curving because it has three double bonds. Uh, and so there's our first double bond, the second, and every double bond is always three apart. So for linolenic acid, which is correctly named alpha linolenic acid, uh, the double bonds would be at three, six, and nine. All right, so they are carboxylic acids. That's why they're called fatty acids because they're carboxylic acids that we derive from fats. Uh, and that's our general formula. The end can be all different lengths, and they end with the COOH, but we're going to be drawing them. So we would show that one of those oxygens is double bonded, and the other one is the OH, which is going to be the part that reacts. Uh, and in our bodies, it's always an even number. When we get to metabolism, we'll see why that is. Uh, in, in our body, we break down things to food. One of the things fatty acids do, one of many things, but one is storing energy for later use. Uh, and we 
eventually break down any, everything, whether it was glucose or fatty acids or proteins, into a two carbon group, which then goes into the Krebs cycle and electron transport to make ATPs. So if you remember, glucose was also an even number. So we, we store it as even numbers. Um, and so this is one of the big points of drawing it. The double bond is important because it makes them kinky. They now have a kink, which makes them fluid. Uh, so it gives fluidity. So the keyword there should be fluid. Whereas here, the saturated, this is saturated, no double bond, and no kink, it stacks, which is gonna make a clot, which is not anything any of us want. Uh, and then what I also talked about in nature, they are a cis double bond, and that's what gives us the kink. And so man decided, hey, let's try and do something better. And we made junk food or trans fats. Uh, one of the biggest sources of trans fats, everybody was thinking potato chips and stuff. And I, uh, it was actually all the baked goods had loaded with trans fats. Um, they are banned. Uh, but let's walk through it. Yeah, so it turned out your fried food also was loaded with trans fats. Uh, interestingly, my understanding is they just have to label. They're not banned. If you have trans fats, they have to be labeled. My understanding was Oreos still have trans fats. I'm not an Oreo fan. Um, my mom never bought them when we grew up, and I don't actually like the taste. I also don't like donuts at all. Um, so it's a good blessing. So Joey probably doesn't either because he never had them in the house. But uh, they couldn't get the right texture and taste on Oreos without the trans. Now that was a story like 10 years ago when the trans whole thing became in the limelight. So this is showing you the two double bonds creating the kink. This is uh, would have to tell you uh, this looks like it's an omega-9 and this is trans and it comes out looking just like the saturated. Now, and that's where your heart says, what is going on? Because two things happen. One, it looks like the saturated, so it makes the clot. And as I mentioned, though, it has a double bond, which is going to create another problem, which is oxidation. And I get to that in a couple slides. Um, and so your heart is running away. Another issue is you would think your body would say, okay, it looks like it stacks up. I'm just gonna store it where I would store these guys. But no, your body never saw these. And so your body fixates on the double bond. You know how you get fixated on something? Like everybody else has moved on, but you're fixated. Well, unfortunately that's how your body is. Your liver fixates and says, oh, there's a double bond. And it stores it and puts it to use where the double bonds would be put to use. But does it look like one of these? I don't think so. We lost the kink. And so we're gonna end up having trouble. Uh, and we get to that as we go through these lectures. I keep saying we get to that, but we keep building on that. Uh, so it's really important. You guys have a huge advantage. You can go back and watch me over and over and over again. God bless you if you do that. Um, so what's the big deal about trans fats? So when I showed this one, this picture last term, Kenna, some of you know Kenna, Kenna's like, oh, you're making me hungry. Many of my pictures made Kenna hungry, but um, she hopefully did not go out and eat this. She said her dad would have, uh, but these are just loaded with trans and even worse, oxidized fats. Um, I haven't talked about bacon yet, have I? Uh, so the cute little pig, I'm not telling you not to eat the pig, but you shouldn't eat the pig. Well, trans fats started with margarine and the pig farmers figured it out like within one to two years, the trans fats caused heart disease. And they banned people who used margarine from giving their table scraps to the pigs. So they put all these people at heart disease. My, my uh, one uncle back in the 70s had a heart attack and they told him to start using margarine instead of butter. And they told him to start eating egg beaters fake eggs. Um, and so we ended up having another heart attack eventually. Um, and it probably caused more damage because the trans fats, your body didn't know. I mean, why not just tell them to eat fruit and vegetables? Uh, and this is the other thing. When you have trans fats in your restaurant, there are no rats because the rats also 
will not eat trans fats. They know, they stay away. And so what happens in that health department in New York um, several years ago when they were the first to totally ban it, it was this whole to-do, Joey and I were in New Jersey, it was on New Year's Eve, um, the rats all came back because now the trans fats were gone. So, uh, and the other one are ants. So this is a picture. These are trans fats, margarine, and even more interesting, the reduced fat margarine. Oh, and regular butter, and you just leave it out. You guys can all do this experiment. I was so excited several days ago that ants came back. I was actually really worried. If you listen to my videos from last week, I think I commented, oh, it was the aspartame. And I said, oh, the ants haven't come yet. I wonder why, but they're back. And that means the earth right now is safe because the ants disappear when there's going to be an earthquake. And so I went into my little paranoia funniness. But um, yeah, you can line. Like right now we have ants and, and I celebrate my ants. But it was like if we had margarine, you could line your counters with margarine and that would get rid of the ants because they despise it. They know that it is not good for them or for their queen that's what they're there to feed. So some of the things you don't, so it was a question John asked me, it was actually an excellent question. Uh, and I appreciate these. Um, how much of this do you need to know? You need to know that trans fats are bad. You need to be able to draw them. You need to know that they lost the kink, that they stack, that they still have a double bond. Uh, and everything that's gonna show up in this slide is purely bad. So it would be a multiple choice question. And if it said trans fats are good for you, you would say, well, that's the wrong one. Uh, it's CVD is cardiovascular disease, CA is cancer, so much higher rates. I should have like five up arrows, 10 up arrows. You could not do enough up arrows. Uh, it is, there's the nurses study. So there was, uh, there's a man, this is still going on. And my mom is actually part of it. She's been part of it for like 30 years. Um, and they send her a survey. She's like the control. She jokes she's the control, but I don't think she is. I, you're all part of the study. Uh, and they ask you questions about your health. Um, and they have found, uh, and it's also in doing surgeries on women, that's not part of the study, but it is. Now they can do meta-analysis um, and there's been so many, so many surgeries done on women's breasts. Uh, and when women have breast cancer, uh, and they always find trans fats because trans fats will accumulate in the fattiest part and that is the breast tissue. And for those of you who are male, don't worry. One, you can get men breasts, but number two, prostate is a very fatty part and prostate cancer will be loaded with trans fats um, and other wonderful things. It encourages inflammation. So Every one of you knows somebody who is suffering from inflammation before all the hubbub about the coronavirus and stuff. Uh, people were just in pain all the time. Uh, like nothing I've ever seen before, and it's been in the past five years especially, um, people are just in this chronic pain. And women seem to have more than men, but everyone just is, and it's because of our diet is a huge factor. Uh, and so you have inflammation. We're going to see next week um, when we get to prostaglandins, one of the big issues there. Oh, this is a big one right now, right? Because of this whole thing about our immune system. This should be a big thing all the time. Even before coronavirus came, your immune system gets altered by trans fats. Uh, so fewer B cells, which are the ones that make antibodies, and more T cells, uh, which is good and bad. Too many T cells leads to cancer. All right. It decreases your insulin response. So non-insulin dependent diabetes, type 2 diabetes, what used to be adult onset diabetes. So yeah, trans fats. That's not a sugar. Wait, what's going on here? All right. Um, changes your fatty acid composition and it changes your liver's abilities. Remember the liver gets obsessed with these. And its obsession doesn't allow it to do its correct detox. Uh, we're going to talk about, we do a lecture next week on cholesterol. So more of the bad cholesterol, less of the good. This term bad and good cholesterol is a total unfortunate misnomer that was given. And we'll talk about it next week. But it changes your cholesterol ratios, causes narrowing of the arteries decreases your prostaglandins, which are so important. We talk about them next week. 
you don't need to remember any of this. You just need to remember there's nothing good about this. Oh my goodness, your testosterone drops? Wait a minute. Don't worry, we have a pill for that. Oh, abnormal sperm. Those guys can't swim anymore because they don't have squigglies. They, yeah, they lost all the squiggly, the kinkiness, uh, and decreased in birth rates. And this is going to be a big one. We have a lecture, the third lecture in this series. It's about our membranes, our cell membranes. Uh, and this is the big deal. This is the big one. It's number 10 on the list, but it should be like huge. And in pink letters, uh, they mess up your membranes. And that's why it causes all the ones above it. And we have to get some more of the foundation before we can get to that. And as I already mentioned, mold, rodents, insects, and pig farmers will not go anywhere near this stuff because it killed the pigs so fast they figured it out. This was back in the 70s that they figured it out. How long did it take them to get rid of it from our food? Well, oh, look at all that yummy stuff. Yeah, we see these artificial trans fats widely linked to heart disease. Wait, this is a blog. They didn't have blogs back in the 70s or the 80s or the 90s or even 2000s. And there, that's David, I think. Oh, 1993, oh, this is good. So it wasn't that long, only 20 years after the pig farmers figured it out. Harvard study finds a link. As my mom would say, oh, Joyce was already teaching about this. Oh, wait, that's a big 13 year gap. Some of you got, like, were birthed in that time, including Joey. The FDA says, uh, maybe we should label. It was a little label. They said maybe. Oh, I guess they did. A requirement means you had to label. Oh, and then this was the New York Board of Health banned them. And several restaurants had to close because they said they could not make their food, especially bakeries, without trans fats. It just wouldn't work because of the texture. Uh, and then some of the big chains went trans free and they weren't very happy. Uh, and they just made other kind of processed crap that's going to get banned in another 10, 20 years. And then, oh, wait, this is still a long time ago. So why am I still talking about it? Oh, in 2013, our FDA decided to do a preliminary study if we should completely ban them. And then they suggest a ban would prevent 20,000 heart attacks and about 7,000 deaths per year. It's a suggestion. By the way, every three months, there's over 200,000 heart attack deaths or something crazy like that. So I think these numbers are a huge underestimate. Um, and oh yeah, my source was the FDA and another article, but uh, yeah, trans fats. The worst foods, as I mentioned, pastries, anything deep fried, oh, pastas. You know, those cute little mac and cheese, I used to get those for Joey, I know. Um, and so I, it took me a long time to get to where we are now. Uh, and I don't expect you guys can make instant changes overnight, but you should um, as you become educated and understand. Uh, and yeah, brownie mixes, you gotta make it from scratch. If we were meeting, we'd be doing cookie exchanges where you'd be making stuff from scratch, but you will get to, you'll get to share it by video, a recipe that you're gonna make that's healthy. Uh, this is the use of shortening, which is the trans fats, and oh, it stops because where the ban happens, and using butter, using shortening to make those shortbread cookies. Oh, or look, we don't have to worry about trans fats at all if you just keep it real. Oh, you know, this is interesting. I made a spinach and radish salad today with apples. It's really good. And there's no oil, so I don't have to worry about any of this. So trans fats, a lot of you are like, yeah, I heard about this nutrition. I know all this. I know more than her, and you probably do. Uh, and so how much did you learn about peroxidation? Oxidation. Uh, it is correctly called when we talk about with fatty acids, peroxidation. But for our purposes, we'll just, I will just use it interchangeably, peroxidation and oxidation. UFA stands for unsaturated fatty acids. This only happens if there's a double bond. Doesn't matter if it's cis or trans. And another way to think of it, and maybe this will get your attention, this is rust inside your body. 
So picture making, any of you hungry? You thinking, mm, you've already paused me and went and made a snack? Yum. All right, double bonds. And this means we're gonna make free radicals. So a free radical, if you count the dots, he's only got seven. Remember the octet rule? That's one of those things, John, from Chem 104. Octet rule, they need eight. So he's greedy, he's a hoarder, but he's missing one. And so he grabs one. And now this guy's missing one and he grabs one and eventually you just don't have enough electrons. These are electrons. Uh, oxidation means losing electrons and when you lose too many, you just become, this guy looks really ill, not well at all. Okay, uh, and so that's what rancid oil is. There are four causes. You should know these four. High temperature. This is a big one. If you cook with oil, you have caused oxidation to happen. High temperatures, frying, broiling, or oven temperatures above 375. But anytime you heat with oil, you're going to oxidize. You can't cook with oil. And actually, the oil you've already bought was already heated and has already been oxidized. You can't cook with oil. There's no safe oil, period. I know, it's great, because all of you are going out, no, olive oil. I saw the guy, that guy who keeps showing up on my YouTube. Do I have commercial interruptions? I'm hoping I don't have commercial interruptions, but um, all right, so number two is light. So the high temperature, by the way, let's go back one. High temperature is temperature causes jiggles. So those of you who had me for Chem 104, you can sit there and jiggle and wiggle, and all of you who didn't, you can sit there and jiggle and wiggle and giggle, and as you giggle and jiggle, if you had a bunch of these electrons, it would jiggle and giggle them off. You'd lose not all of them, that would be terrible, but one could get jiggled off because you're really jiggling. This is high temperature, not your cute little giggling jiggles. This is like serious ADHD um, beyond jiggles and giggles. Uh, light, and that has to do with photons have a lot of energy. They, they are not matter because neither are you and I. Uh, and if it's a high enough energy light, it doesn't have to be ultraviolet. We know about ultraviolet. By the way, a new hole in the ozone was announced yesterday. None of us heard about it because there's so much else in the news, like an obsession. Um, and this hole in the ozone is over the North Pole. And we live pretty dang close to the North Pole, which means we've created a hole on our part of this planet. Um, and uh, they said it's going to close on its own in the next couple of weeks, but it's something to see that's interesting. All right, so light. Think of the type of bottle you buy your oils in. Well, you shouldn't be buying any oils, but most bottles are clear. I've had students who say, oh, no, no, I'm fine, because I use only buy opaque bottles. So that's one of the things, olive oils are usually sold in the darker bottles. That makes them, well, not really, because cooking with them, air, exposure to air. Oh, something else back to the high temperature. Where do most people store their oil? They store it above the oven, above the stove, so it's easy to reach. I go through this with my mom. Can't, can only change so much in people. But you should not store it anywhere but in the refrigeration. Actually have it in your house because none of them are safe. Uh, but here with air, let's think about McDonald's french fries. Highest temperature possible. Exposure to light because it's this huge big vat. And exposure to oxygen. Oxygen is number one hoarder. Actually, number two, fluorine would be number one, but that would kill you much faster than this. Um, and then heavy metals. This is why women uh, before menopause actually have fewer, one of the reasons is they have lower iron levels. Uh, and after menopause, when your iron levels do increase, um, this is why uh, vitamins, I, I don't recommend vitamins, but most vitamins don't put iron in them anymore because of this potential to cause oxidation damage, which causes scarring. So yeah, I had a gal again. Hopefully, maybe somebody made this their healthy change. Hopefully you guys made it. It's supposed to start last week. If you didn't start it now, give up fast food. Stop going out for fast food. Give up oil. Anything that has PUFAs, you have to keep cold and dark. And you're like, well, but Dr. Sherpa, you just told me I can't have PUFAs. Oh, but you do. 
anytime you have nuts. So the nuts in our house are kept in the refrigerator in mason jars. Um, whole grains are not. Uh, my refrigerator is very small. Um, when I first learned this, I remember saying to the guy, how big is your refrigerator? Uh, fish, obviously, seeds, definitely. Um, maybe I should start putting all my whole grains in the fridge. I mean, a refrigerator, all right? Keep it real. You don't have to worry about it. Fruits, don't have to worry about this at all. They're so amazing. All right, your oils. Yeah, process to death. Get these cooking oils out of your pantry stat. That's from Food Babe. Wish I could have made that slide, but she, he, them, they're right. They got it. They're all processed. They processing created so much oxidation. And then they add these chemicals in so you can't see the oxidation. One of the chemicals is actually bleach. Yes, the same thing you use to make your socks whiter. They add in so you can't see the oxidative damage of these. There's no safe oil. But you're going, oh my gosh, what do you cook with? Uh, I use water or soup broth. And it, actually, I went through this also a couple of years ago. I'd cut my oil down really, really low, minimal. Um, and it would just be like a quick stir fry something and very little. But uh, yeah, it's all been processed. So let's talk about free radicals because that's what oxidation creates, free radical damage. Um, so, right, this plagiarized slide, they're like robbers, uh, and they snatch away electrons, all right? So they take electrons away. We know UV light is not a good thing. We do want sunshine, but too much causes damage. We know smoking causes damage. We know pollution causes damage. Stress, number one cause of free radicals, and nutrition. Yeah, if you're going to eat like this, you're just going to create... I. Did I tell you a story? I had a friend who wanted to know, yeah, and I, um, how she works at uh, Amazon, and she wanted something to protect her lungs from coronavirus, and I said, you got to quit smoking, and her reply was she only smokes six to ten cigarettes a day now, so she's okay. Uh, you can keep smoking. You're creating damage, and then you're not going to know how to spell very well, but this is pretty much everything. Right, they, they go, and other health complications we haven't figured out yet. Um, so top 10 bad, aging, free radicals. That was the acronym, A-G-E. Uh, these free radicals don't create age, they do create aging. A-G-E was specifically from sugar uh, and cooking with sugar and protein together, so barbecue sauce. And we get back to it when we get to proteins, but same idea all the things of aging. So you can think of wrinkly skin, you can think of uh, inflammation. Oh, this is a big one. I should have made this some bright color right now. Immunity, your immune system becomes weakened. So trans fats, you had the trans, you have the free radical damage. This is all oils, even if it's not trans, if you're heating it, frying, processing it, you've weakened your immune system. Damages your blood vessels, that doesn't sound good damages your mitochondria, the little powerhouses that make ATP so you don't have enough energy. It weakens your red blood cell structure. And so premature destruction of your red blood cells, that doesn't sound good. Oh, changes glucose to fat? Yeah, it's the free radicals that come from the deep frying and just too many processed oils. Uh, harms your thyroid interferes with membrane fluidity. We're gonna come back to this, which is how your cells communicate with each other. So the trans and the free radical and wrinkles and oh, just pick it. If you want cancer, Alzheimer's, oh, another type of cancer, heart disease, inflammatory diseases, pick your favorite type of pain. Um, so keep it real. They did come out where they deep fry these. If it's a deep fried asparagus, it is not healthy for you. Um, so just keep it real. Make your own fresh asparagus and or just eat berries. Berries are going to come into season in about a month. It will be awesome. All right. This is, we're going to come to, there's a whole lecture on the cell membrane because it's so important. 
But these guys down here, these little black things that should be squiggly, those are the fatty acids. Uh, and the squiggles, that's where the trans fats and the oxidation, and you just damage your cell membranes, which are your walls. So imagine the walls of your house is getting damaged just slowly over the year, over the next 10 years. And finally, your cell walls, your walls of your house just have these holes that are, how are you going to repair them? You would. You would immediately repair the first hole. We should be doing it. This, I love this. I found this. Uh, these are alternatives. These are the alternatives. This is like a year ago. Oh, sorry. I'm sorry. This was 10 years ago from Harvard. So they say why you should use these. And some of them, they're like, oh, we don't know yet what to do, how much health gain when replacing. Well, if we get rid of liquid vegetable oils, this is our biggest thing. Um, and, oh, I'm sorry. I read this wrong. Replacement for trans using liquid vegetable oils. And they said this was huge high, especially the ones in oleic acid. No, no, because they're processed. They're processed, so they're oxidized. Even bigger problem. This is interesting, because these guys are saturated, so they're not going to cause the oxidation. They're just going to stack up. And this one is unresolved. We really don't know what we're doing when we do this interesterified oils. In one example, interesterification of an unsaturated linolenic acid chain is replaced. But we have unresolved what's going to happen. They've probably resolved it and don't want to admit it. Um, all right, let's just move on. All right, these guys up here, just not a good idea. All of this. Do you see anything real in this picture? This is all like highly processed food. They're trying to tell you, you eat microwave popcorn, that, oh my gosh, do, do your paper on microwave popcorn and maybe it will get you over that fixation. Uh, this was, this is interesting because Denmark got rid of it, didn't have much in there, but Denmark passed a month ago, at the very beginning, just the tip of the edge iceberg of the coronavirus over in Europe, uh, that, they could have mass vaccination that they took away a lot of health rights. Um, all right. So this is the change in trans fat or the amount of trans fats that was in food um, and in different countries, which is fascinating. Uh, this is from Joel Furman's book and just saying no to donuts. So we have the police come in and tell kids say no to drugs but perhaps we should be saying this instead. And having worked, volunteered in the elementary schools, it is very sad. Um, so let's just ask, ask yourself this. How often do you eat fast food? Several times a week? Turns out when they did this survey, only 16%. It's really hard for me to believe this because when I go on bike rides, there's always lines. And you know what's sad is these numbers have probably gone up with the coronavirus. And if you want protection against it, it's not going buying fizzy vitamin C. It's eating real food. All right, 16%. And that is enough. Eating it several times a week, it's almost doubling your risk of heart disease. Just once a week, you're like, I only go once a week, Sherpa. Apparently, 28% of the people who responded said they eat fast food once a week really hard for me to believe it's a slow of numbers. Once a month was 80%. Okay. I mean, there's probably half of us like who never do like me. Um, and never, ever, never, ever. You're just like, mm, no, thank you. Uh, well, that's 4% of us actually admit we never, ever, never, ever. Um, and yeah, a 90% drop, 90% drop in heart disease. 200,000 deaths every three months. Oh, that would bring us down to 20,000. That's a huge change if we adopt a healthier lifestyle. So Harvard, these restaurants aren't the ones that closed. Isn't that fascinating? Everybody else did, but the fast food, the ones that are feeding you crap. So in smoking, people are like, can't happen. You're dreaming. You are such a dreamer. You live in a little bubble. I was told that by several students. You live in this little bubble. My little bubble is so full of bliss. I love my little bubble. Um, and right now I have blessings to live in it because we can't go out, right? All right. 
in 1950, 45% of people smoked, and today it's less than half that. Uh, and so it was 1964 when the warning came out finally from um, the Surgeon General. And so we could see these numbers decrease significantly. And that disappear, that the kids want that. Um, and this is the book that I read, uh, and I highly recommend it, the one up here in the corner, Fast Food Genocide. Uh, and then this is one, and so I apologize when I made the slide, I forgot to have this come in second, but uh, this was a talk. He goes on a lot of talk shows. Um, it's an amazing book. So it is uh, from a couple years ago and it was the idea that our inner cities are, um, they, they have no access to real food. They have access only to fast food and to 7-Elevens. They don't even have supermarkets anymore in inner cities. Look at New York City. New York City is fast food genocide. And where is the coronavirus the highest? Uh, in these areas that don't get to have real food. And so this is a book I just found. I haven't read it. I don't have it yet. Um, but anyway, uh, it's a more recent book. And I just liked the picture to tell you the truth. Um, I don't know anything about the author or the book. But there is one more slide. Um, and again, I messed up this slide. So it was every bite you take, you have a choice. So you have a choice between the one hand had this crappy, all these burgers or this. All right, we have one more slide. And that is, you guys are gonna practice drawing more because I realized I only did this once. So you can always pause me and then do this, take a deep breath, but let's try drawing some more fatty acids. There we go. All right, so I thought we should do some more practice. Uh, and so we're gonna draw some fatty acids. And so these are gonna be the three you're gonna try. And then I will draw them on my white erase board and we'll see how we'll do. And one of the things, I also took some of these wonderful kits and I wanted to show you the difference. This is what happens with trans. And we'll see that when we draw it. So we have a double bond. Uh, and it's coming in and going out across. And so we get this zigzag, which is a similar thing that happens. This is our fatty acid that's all saturated. And it just zigzags. And these can, they do rotate. Let me try and get it the way we've been drawing it. Uh, and this end is our fatty acid end. Um, and so it zigzags. And that's what happens with trans. It ends up zigzagging just like it. Uh, and then this would be cis. Cis creates kink. And so what happens when we get all these kinks is they keep kinking and they end up twisting. I, I, I had to take all the hydrogens out because they just kept running into each other. And then I ran out of carbons, so I couldn't do more. But it kinks it. Um, and that kink creates... Uh, the fluidity. So go ahead, you can pause me. I'm going to keep going. Uh, a reminder actually, this first number is how many carbons you're doing. Uh, and then the second number is how many double bonds. And then this tells you where the first double bond begins from the end that's not the carboxylic acid. And so just to be consistent, and I didn't look in the book, I'm going to draw the first one out like this. And since I'm drawing my carboxylic acid starting here on the left side at number one, I do want to write this as a hoe. And so that would be my one, and you will be showing the zigzags. Uh, so here's two, four, six, all my molecules, two, four, six, eight, ten. So that's ten, and it's just zigzags because it's saturated. So if we classify, it's a SFA, saturated fatty acid. Now the next one we know it's a MUFA, and more importantly, it's a trans. So if you want to do all zigzags, you can just do your first one like this as a zigzag, and you can actually just zigzag if it's trans all the way out. So this is two, six, ten. Oh, let's see if we're gonna keep it on here. 
uh, that would be 14, and that would be 16. And so the omega-6 is my first double bond is from this end. So I can count now from this end, two, four, six. And because it's trans, I can do the zigzag the whole way. And then the double bond is from this end, the omega end. And it would be six to seven. So really these numbers were just there as a counting. All right, I don't know why my green marks there. All right, so let's try and do a kink one. So the kink ones, you really have to start at the far end and wrap around. Uh, and so to do an omega three, we're gonna do one, two, three. So this is at three, and then the double bonds are every three. So this is three to four, so that's five to six. And I just realized, which is good. So when you make a mistake, because I'm only doing two double bonds, I was thinking I was doing three. Um, and so remember that little hint I gave you, if it's saturated or trans, you're just gonna do linear. If you have, I'm gonna do up here, one double bond and it's cis, you're gonna have like a uh, slant. If you have two double bonds, which is what I have here, we're gonna kind of make an L. And then when you get three or four double bonds, you're gonna end up looping all the way around. So we're gonna start here, one, two, three, because I'm gonna make this L kind of shape. Uh, and there's my first double bond at three to four. And then five, six, here's my second double bond at six to seven. And eight, nine, so this is six, seven, eight, nine. There's my 12. So there's 16. And because I'm ending up down, I want to show my double bond pointing down to my oxygen. And then my OH is going to run into this with our omega 3. So I want to write it as an HO. Uh, and so that's our idea of how to do them. Now, let's take it one step further. Um, it's some questions that I do ask you in the study set. I just wrote, so that's why I thought I'd do this, is first question, question number one. Uh, which ones can go through hydrogenation? So the word is hydrogen and then ation, but we say hydrogenation. And you've probably heard of partial hydrogenation, I'm sure I talk about in the video. So hydrogenation means we're gonna add hydrogens. So to add hydrogens, it must mean it's missing some hydrogens. So you need a double bond. So trans or cis can go through the hydrogenation. So my middle two can go through hydrogenation. Uh, partial hydrogenation just means we fill in some of the double bonds. And to do a process, you do create heat. All the double bonds open, but only some of them fill in and become saturated. But what happens in hydrogenation is you go completely to a saturated fatty acid. So we would completely go to the top one, but with just more carbon. All right, a second question is which ones can be peroxidized or oxidized? So which ones go through peroxidation? And uh, that means oxidation, which means they lose electrons. And again, this is terribly awful. This is not good at all. This is anything with a double bond. Uh, the double bonds are very susceptible to oxidation. So again, MUFAs, PUFAs, I didn't classify this was a PUFA because it had multiple double bonds. Uh, trans can go through it. And we're gonna also learn next week, cholesterol also goes through oxidation. All right, one more question, which is, let's look at melting point. Um, I know there's a couple in the homework and I'll give the answers. You can always look at the key. So the highest melting point are the ones that stack which are gonna be my top two, stack. Uh, and if they stack, you have more than one that stacks, then you look at the number of carbons as you increase the carbons. So my MUFA, this is gonna have my highest, because it's trans, it is my highest melting point because it stacks and has the most carbons. This guy is gonna be my lowest melting point because of the kinks. More kinks, lower the melting point. All right, I hope that helped. And you're gonna also build a triglyceride, but we'll do practice. We did practice with that. So thanks.
have a great day. And All right. Bye. Right, the video's over. Uh, my reference at the end to triglycerides, that's actually in the next video. And so there is practice with drawing more of these. Uh, the biggest point is that you get this first number again is the number of carbons. So it's the number of zigs and zags. And the second number is the number of kinks that you have. Uh, or the one at the top that you can't see anymore had zero. So saturated, SFA, all single bonds. Uh, MUFA, mono unsaturated, is one double bond. And PUFA can be two, three, four, I've even seen five. Uh, the double bonds are always three apart. Omega three, this was, there's no three, uh, is the first double bond is three in. So they'll be at three, six. If there was another one, it would be at nine. Uh, and omega-6 would be 6 in, omega-9 would be 9 in. All right, see you soon. And happy Easter. It's Easter today. Hope you're having a beautiful, glorious day. And...